Hello everyone and welcome back to another whiteboard video. Today I want to talk about why rounding your back is actually a good thing and specifically why I don't think many of you should fear training in a rounded back position. Now I do want to be nuance friendly here so I'm not going to go ahead and say that rounding your back all the time uh, for everyone is going to be a good thing in sort of a blanket type of way. But I just want to present a case for the rounded back argument because a lot of people seem to be hell bent on saying that if you round your back at all, it's a terrible thing. So I want to sort of talk about two main reasons uh, why I think that this discussion needs to be had. The first reason is a discussion that involves understanding correlation and causation. Okay, so why do I think that people have commonly espouse this belief that rounding your back during any exercise, specifically deadlifts, is a problem. Well, because oftentimes what happens is people load up their one rep max on a bar or something that is maybe above what their one rep max has ever been, or maybe it's a three rep max or a five rep max. In any case, you're doing a deadlift and you're getting to a point where you're fatiguing so much that you can't really handle the load anymore, right? At least in the position that you start the deadlift in. And so what happens is people fail to maintain whatever technique they started with. So let's say someone starts with a relatively straight neutral spine, or maybe it's an arched position. At some point along the way, they're pulling the bar up, 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 and then their back starts to round, right? And a lot of times when people's backs round on a deadlift and they're doing a very, very heavy deadlift, um, and you see that video on the internet, a lot of times it's a video where that person gets hurt. So what people falsely assume is that the rounded back position was the cause of the injury. Now, this might seem confusing at face value, but to understand this, we really just need to understand the difference between correlation and causation. So a good example might be if I walked into this room and I let out a massive fart, okay, as I walked into this room, would that necessarily mean that my walking into the room was the cause of my fart? No. They happen simultaneously, but it doesn't mean one caused the other. So in a similar sense, if my back rounds in the deadlift, does that mean that the rounded position was the bad thing? Or are there a host of other factors that may be involved, such as the fact that if you're doing a one rep max and you're pushing your limits, uh, and in any situation wherein you're pushing your limits, there is a heightened risk of injury, right? You're doing something or you're trying to do something that you've never done before. No one looks at someone getting hurt on a bench press and says the bench press is bad. They say, oh, this was an unfortunate thing. Uh, he was lifting more than he could lift, right? But when it comes to the deadlift, because we have so many more moving parts in terms of our ability to actually move through the spine and the hips and the knees and a variety or a combination of those things, we can sort of change our body's position as we are pulling the bar up. And so if we end up in this rounded back position and we do end up getting hurt, um, we conclude that the rounded back was the cause, whereas it was really just this thing that could have occurred simultaneously, right? And, and in the same way, there are tons of times where people's backs round in a deadlift and they also don't get hurt. Go to any powerlifting meet and look at people um, pulling incredibly heavy amounts of load with a rounded back posture. Okay, so that's where I think this comes from. And that's where I think that people need to be careful about making assumptions uh, around what is the cause of a particular injury. Now, am I going to say that it's never the cause? No, of course not, right? But we can't confidently make these statements in very specific scenarios and then extrapolate that logic out to everyone all the time forever. Now, here's where I think this gets really problematic in a general sense to the general public when we're extrapolating this kind of situation out to you know, Sally, who's a mom in her 60s who um, is scared of rounding her back because of what some dude or, or chick on the internet said about rounding your back, which is that injury is in many ways a self-fulfilling prophecy, or at least this kind of perspective around injury. So let me try to sort of visualize this with a little diagram here, my expert uh, drawing skills. So it all starts with the opinion that low back round equals bad 
right? That's the starting belief. So what does that lead to? That leads to no LB low back rounding. I'll just abbreviate that LBR, no low back rounding in training. Okay, so no low back rounding in training comes from low back rounding being bad. The belief leads to the action. What does the action leads to? lead to? It leads to an adaptation or really a lack of adaptation in low tolerance, I'll abbreviate as TOL, to low back rounding. In other words, if you avoid the low back rounded position and if you avoid training it, what happens? Well, what doesn't happen is you don't get stronger in the rounded low back position. So then what happens? Potentially, you get injured in the low back position when perhaps you are doing a one rep max on a deadlift or a squat, or perhaps you're just uh, uh, picking something up off the ground in your daily life that was maybe heavier than you expected. Right, whatever it happens to be, you end up in a situation inevitably where you are in this position and where as a consequence of your total avoidance of training the position, you are now underprepared relative to what you might be in that particular case because again, you avoided it all to, all to begin with because you thought that it was bad. And then what does the injury do? Well, it simply just reinforces the cycle of Believing that low backgrounding is bad, therefore not training it because you think it's bad, therefore having a low tolerance to actually producing force in that position, therefore leading to greater amounts and greater um, magnitudes of injuries in this position. And by the way, this applies to all positions and all exercises. It doesn't just apply to a rounded back type of hinge. So at the very least, I hope that this was thought provoking. What this doesn't mean is this doesn't mean that you should just throw your one rep max on the bar and start to load your back in a rounded position. What it does mean is that you should consider starting to introduce activities wherein you are intentionally loading yourself in a rounded back position. You can do this simply with a barbell, perhaps doing some kind of Jefferson curl activity, super light to begin with. Don't do what you can do, do what you think um, you can do minus a little bit of load and minus a little bit of effort, right? When you're reintroducing or you're introducing an activity that you have either never done or haven't done in a very long time and have low tolerances to, just do less than you think that you can do for the first time, trust me, right? You're gonna be plenty sore, plenty fatigued from it uh, if you've never really intentionally trained low back rounding stuff before. And the stronger that you get at these motions, the more and more and more confident you're going to become in this position, and the more confident you're going to become in your resilience to injury, and you're going to be so surprised, I think, at the amount that you can tolerate in a position that you maybe once thought was actually bad. And so the reverse of this would be, instead of thinking about low back rounding being bad, low back rounding is just low back rounding. So as a consequence of that, we train the position, and as a consequence of that, we build our tolerance and strength in that position. And then as a consequence of that, we don't get injured picking up pencils. We don't get injured uh, in that position because we are prepared to handle the demands in a majority of cases. Of course, freak things can happen just as it can with any exercise in any position. But I hope this perspective is helpful. I hope it's refreshing, potentially something that you haven't heard before and potentially something that you yourself can start to apply uh, to yourself if you're just a regular bro or broette who likes to lift or your clients, you can make your clients more resilient. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more from me, you can actually join my free community. It's totally free, no cost. Just click the link in the description and I'm happy to answer any questions you have about this in the free community.